So here we are again. <clears throat> this is actually part of my latest project. On my right here I've got uh, an eight voice synth board that I've made with an effects unit on the end which you can't see, it's off camera. Big row of connections for the interfacing. Some more connections to the right which again you can't see but they're for interfacing. And on the left hand side I need to make a controller board. Um, well, the controller board will contain the main microprocessor for doing the voicing, um, the DMUX for generating CV signals and um, shift registers for generating outputs as well to switch on and off various options on the voice board. Um, not really much of an idea. I mean, I've built many of these before, probably built half a dozen of these type of boards before. So I've got an idea of, of what I want, but um, this one needs to go into quite a confined space. So really, I can't use all of this proto board. I can, I can probably use probably this much of it. So I want to keep it as compact as possible. Length is not so important because I've got a 76 key chassis to fit it in. Um, I'll join the two boards together with ribbon cables and connectors and I'll take longer ribbon cables across the voice board. I have room here across the voice board to take longer cables. What I don't have is any room at the front of the voice board because this is going to sit underneath a keyboard um, mechanism key bed. So there's not going to be a lot of room under there. So um, I can't really have lots of cables running across the front of the voice board but I can have anything I want up here up to a reasonable height so that's not too bad which is one of the reasons why on the voice board I put all my connectors um, in the top half as you can see so back to this I've got my TNT 4.1 um, and I need to program it etc and it won't be easy to program in the chassis if I put it this way around. So that's probably not going to be a good idea for it. So really I need my TNT 4.1 probably down here. Um, that's probably too far down. The reason it's there is, um, in fact, yeah, it's a tricky one this. Might be better to have it way at the top like that. The connector can come off that way for the USB. Um, USB host can come up or across and get access to the card. It's not too bad. Um, I've then got a DAC to fit on the board. Um, just bear with me a second. I've got a nice quality 16-bit DAC with the holder courtesy of Andreas, I can never get his name wrong. You know who you are. So that's got to go on there, and I need some MIDI as well. So MIDI will be an 8 pin socket, even if it's only going to be a 6 pin chip. Um, move that down a bit to get the other bits of chips around it. And then I've got basically. I need 48, approximately 48 CVs, probably just below, because it's um, by Timbrel Synth, I need to split the CVs into two, so I need um, 32, sorry, it's not 48, 64, I need 32 for the um, lower voicing and 32 for the upper voicing, as that gives me 64. So I'm going to use four 4067s, that's one. Two, three, four. So 
I'll put them like that approximately and I'm probably at the limit of where I want to be gives me a bit of room up here for logic um, and then the rest of it can be used for the sampling hold and demoxes and there's going to be a lot so if each one of these is 16 then I need four op amps per board for the demox And each one of these will have, um, if it's just a straight DMUX, it will just have a capacitor and nothing else. Um, and basically be um, a, a buffer effectively. But because my DAC's only capable of plus 3.3 .3 output max and I need 5 volts, then I'll have to build some times 2 amps so I need a little bit of room for the capacitor and for the um, resistors around it so I need to lay these out to take care of all of these so four holes between each op amp should be enough. So that's that four, that's 16 outputs. Now I can drop them down a little bit if I'm going to do it this way because there's going to be a lot of empty space. Um, I can't do it any other way because there's not enough vertical space. To do it any other way that I can see. So this is this is the hardest part. This is planning layouts. Because obviously once you start committing this. Slightly bent pin on that chip holder. Once you start committing this, it gets a bit tricky to correct it if you've made a lot of wire changes. Um, so basically you've got the TNT 4.1, which will drive over SPI the DAC, which is eight channel 16 bits. So you'll get up to eight voltages out of this. My plan is to write to all four, sort of sequentially, but four at once of these 16 way DMUXs. And that will give me 16 outputs. So then I need 16 sample and holds per chip to give me 40, 64 sorry, st um, stable voltages, which will control this. So effectively, I would do the same again here and carry on with these. Um, I'd have, I'm going to have to choose a sensible capacitor. for uh, the timing because once you, with a sample and hold you need to be able to hold the charge on the capacitor without it drooping um, to keep the voltage stable you don't want a sawtooth out of the sample and hold you need a, um, a smooth line or you'll get glitches in your sound and things like that so I tend to go with 100 nanofarad it seems a lot compared to most synths which we use between 10 and 50 but for me with a teensy 100 nanofarad seems to work um, so I need to put 100 nanofarad capacitors all around these plus resistors um, in some cases I'll, what I'll do is I'll go through my design and say which ones are not 2 volts where I don't need any amplification and which ones are not 5 volts where I'll do so I'll put resistors around them so I'll have groups of them effectively and that's what I'll do here in this section probably be able to put shift registers I need um, again quite a lot probably in, in excess of um, 32 per 
upper and lower section shift registers to do things like the filter type switching, um, amplifier uh, envelope lin log switching, etc. Maybe not 32, may maybe maybe 24 at least, but uh, if it is 32, that's four chips again, same as same as here. Um, and if it's less than obviously one less chip per eight. Um, and you daisy chain them so they're easy enough to control there's nothing really too much to do but having said that they will be generating 5 volt outputs um, these, sh these shift registers and in some cases 5 volts is too much so what I might what I normally do is shove them through a 4504 level converter to drop them from 5 volts to 4 volts to 3.3 volts where 3.3 volts is required such as in the effect processor sections um, that's all 3.3 volt control. I can't use 5 volt there, I'll destroy the chips. And so, yeah, they've got to be converted. So I know at least I need eight lines that have got to be 3.3 volts. So I'll need a couple of 4504s to do that. I can probably fit everything in here in this section. Maybe, yeah, this, I don't need any resistors or anything like that. It's just basically chips. And decoupling. So I might be able to get this board down to about this size. Um, this is easy enough to cut. I need input um, to go to for power. I need input for power and I need input to the um, MUX board which is reading in all the controls for the front panel. I haven't even designed that yet but I'm trying to be clever here. Um, I need display which is eight uh, seven wires well five and power um, I need the encoder which is two wires I need four buttons uh, which another four, obviously another four wires so I need a good 16 to 20 pins on here probably more with power um, oh yeah and I, I also um, do I need to do this? I was thinking. No, I don't. All right. Okay. So, yeah, about twenty pins here for input. On the outputs, I'm going to have to have rows. Two rows. Sixteen, 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 sixteen. Um, for the CV outputs. And possibly try and squeeze the digital outputs into it into here if they'll fit. Don't know if they will. Probably not, it's getting a bit crowded this side now if I think about it. I might have to move them over here and have long wire runs, but I don't really want that if possible. I want to keep it as short as possible. Well, it gives you an idea of what are the sort of um, things I'm up against um, when designing. So this is what I'll do, and if, if I'm happy with this, I mean, I'll ponder this in my head a bit longer and put some more chips on the board to see if there's room. If I take 16, pin chips for the um, shift registers and I think about how many I need I can put these very close together because I can say there's nothing except outputs and they're all 5 volt I need, I need room for for input so I've got to move that over yeah, that's the sort of thing you forget. You need, you know, oh yeah, fit, put that there. But really, you're gonna put a pack, you put a put a big connector there. So um, it's not as easy as you think. So that's that and that. One, two, three. Another one in the wrong position. One more just to see how it fits. So that's now, doesn't give me a lot of room to put another connector down here to get the digital outputs to the board without moving everything up, which wastes a lot of space. So I'm not sure I want to do that. And that's four.
and you'd probably need another four. I need some level conversion as well, so a couple, at least a pair of 404, 504s for level conversion. You see that air is pretty full now. Um, what was a large empty space before is now uh, pretty full. So that's getting quite tight. Still, I can keep Keep it down to keep it down to there and to there. I'll just run the cables flat at an angle there. I'll use things like this for the outputs. Now I've run out of those connectors already, so I'm going to need some more of them. Oh, there's another one. So yeah, I'm going to use a lot of connections here. for those that gives me all the CV outputs um, that I should need could probably move them down but just to be in line like that so now I can say lower upper and lower um, CV voltages. That's a bit tricky to get them in there. Where I could really do with them. And I need quite a lot. So probably not a good idea to try and get them there. I might end up just extending it another section. I'll have to have a think about it. But I'll give you an idea. So I'll take a photo of that and I'll remove all the big stuff and I'll solder the chips down, chip sockets down where they are, and then I'll do the rest. So just carrying on, I've had a little think about this and I've counted up how many control lines I need and it's actually about 34 to 36. So I've got six, um, shift registers there which gives me 6 8 48 uh, lines which is plenty and I've got room for two four five oh fours which will convert uh, the voltages down to 3.3 volts I've got six on each that's 12 if I need them I should only need eight I think so there's plenty spare there uh, which means I can now move my connectors into a sensible position give me a little bit more room to play with and I'm generally happy with that layout. I've got power coming in here on the left. I've got my display there. I can use this for MIDI as well. And then I've got things like the encoder and the pins on this. And I've also got a private MIDI line which goes to the front panel which sends information to the 
eight displays um, to display the current layout status of the synth. That's a sort of experimental thing, but that's what I intend to use. Um, I've also got the DMUX. Oh, actually, might need more lines. <laughs> so, power here. Display. Yeah, I'm going to need a few more lines, I've just realised. So, let's see. These things I don't mean, I've, I've got. Um, how many pots have I got? Quite a lot. Yeah. About 16 pots, so I'm going to need at least two analog lines and two 4067s, so that's another four lines to control them. So that's six lines to talk to them. Uh, the rest is going to be done over MIDI, I hope. I'm not sure. So, six from here. I can put, I've got room for another connector, so that's not a big deal. I can take that out. 16 in. Gives me a few more pins. It's probably not a 16, it's a 15. That's a 16. So we'll put that into there. That gives me a 16, gives me a lot more pins there. So that should be a bit be it. Hopefully this will fit into the gap where it needs to go and not take, not intrude into the underneath the keyboard too much. Um, I don't need all 40 pins on here anyway, so I'll probably stop about here. So that limits it quite a lot. Okay, let's think about this a bit more and um, I think we're good to go.